Nine 60 second habits to connect across generations. Uh, the only place fluff belongs is on a sandwich. So let's get into it. Number one, notice. Number two, wonder. Number three, inquire. Those first three all packed together have such a profound ability to turn differences into connection. When you walk into a space, typically we walk in with a level of preconceived notions, assumptions, and judgments. And when you walk in with the intention of noticing and wondering and inquiring, you have a totally different experience of the exact same conversation or scenario. So let's say you work with somebody who's in a very different generation. Either they're older or they're younger and they're all on their phone. Am I creating stereotypes right now? <laughs> was, was, was that okay? Stereotypes? It's like, I think it's okay that you had it. You had it, people. You know? Yeah? It is on the line. It's, it's on the line. Notice the first idea is actually being present. Um, so often when we're not connecting across generations, we are actually living in the past with our past experiences and our past ideas of who that other person or their generation is. And so notice brings you right into the present. Just notice who they are, how they are, right? When I hear conversation about generations uh, and it's like, oh, millennials do this or oh, boomers do this. This is uncomfortable, what I'm about to say. Replace that generation with a race. Oh, all black people do this. That all of a sudden feels pretty uncomfortable. And I think the reason it does is because we recognize that lumping a huge group of people into one bucket just is not generally true, right? There's more diversity within those larger buckets. And so when you notice, you start to pick out the nuances. And when you connect with the nuances, um, that is where you can build bridges across with people. So the second one, wonder, is once you notice something, actually tap into what are you naturally, genuinely curious about? So take judgment, pack it up in a little box, smash it, crush it, and just be curious for a minute wonder about what that thing you've just noticed is. And then the third step is the action of actually inquiring. All three of these take less than 60 seconds probably combined. You could walk into a room with a, an employee or colleague or a family member that you've known for years or who you've just met and you could notice, wonder, and inquire. Habit number four is neutralize your questions. So often, without even being conscious of it, the questions we ask have judgment embedded in them. So we see a millennial uh, or a Gen Zer uh, on their phone at lunch with four other people on their phones at lunch. And the question that comes up for me when I see that is why in the world did they go out to lunch together? Do you hear the judgment that's embedded in that question? Easiest way to neutralize your questions, and this isn't a cure-all, but it neutralizes your questions quite a bit, is start your questions with the words what or how. Questions that begin with why tend to be riddled with judgment. Whether it's well-intentioned or not, it's got judgment in it, and so it tends to shut that person down and does not help you connect across generations. Number five, 15 minutes before I got married, I had a mentor walk up to me. I'm standing outside the place that I'm gonna get married, and he put his hand on my shoulder, and he said, are you present? Because you really don't wanna miss your own wedding. If you wanna connect across generations, Pretend that I teleported into your office or living room or classroom or wherever else you are, put my hand on your shoulder and said, are you present? Because there's another human being, regardless of their age, sitting across from you with an entire lifetime of ungoogleable experience. And if you are really present with that, it's possible that you'll learn something fantastic. I'm looking for a quote here somewhere and I can't find it, but it's from Bill Nye the Science Guy and it says, everyone you will ever meet knows something that you don't. Just take that quote. This, vi this whole video probably could have been that quote and that's how you connect across generations. Everyone you will ever meet knows something that you don't. Number six, set clear intentions. And number seven, share that intention with them. Rarely do we pause long enough to come up with an intention for a particular interaction. If we do, even more rarely do we take the time to share that intention with the other person. And so six and seven, get clear about what your intent is in an interaction with somebody in or across generations. Get clear about what that intention is and share it with them. 
It roots out the ability for manipulation. It puts you on the same playing field. The other person gets to say, so if I walk in and let's say you are not in my generation and I'm wanting to connect with you. If I say, hey, my intention right now is recognizing we come from two different perspectives and we were born in different decades. And so we're both trying to solve this problem. I'd love to know how you go about thinking about that and perhaps have an exchange that blends our two perspectives with the aim of solving this problem. Right? Do you see how with that intention, and this is just an off the cuff thought, it'll be, make more sense in your own context. But when you're clear about your intent, it is pretty profound how on the same page you can get with somebody very different from you. Number eight, I was in uh, Sequoia National Park with my wife, Kate, and we bumped into this park ranger. A big white beard, one of those Smokey the Bear hats. And as we walked up, Kate looked at him and said, nice hat. And his first reaction was to take it off and hand it to Kate and say, wanna try it on? Like, sure. We, what we didn't know is that trying it on also signed us up for a 45 minute conversation on a bench with Frank. It was an awesome conversation though. And in it, he was a, a retired educator. He taught uh, math in a high school for 35 years, retired and decided he wanted to walk the woods in Sequoia National Park. And he said um, he would teach his students every single year the million dollar lesson. And he asked us, do you want to learn the million dollar lesson? And what it was, and he had it in his scratch writing on the back of his uh, National Park business card, it was four steps that all boiled down to be a good listener. And so habit number eight, which does take less than 60 seconds, is listen. Really listen to what somebody else has said. And a nuance that somebody gave me uh, recently, which admittedly I don't think I'm very good at, is listen and remember what they've said. So listen to what somebody has said and really take it in and remember it. And the next time you're with them, reference that thing. So if, uh, if somebody's talking about, right, I'm in a generation right now, I, in two weeks, probably actually by the time this video is published, uh, I will have a second child named Ellie, perhaps. And so this is the time period I am in, in my life. Some other people might be worried about taking care of sick parents. Some other people might be worried about their, or paying attention to their own mortality. But if I can listen to what anybody has said, no matter what age they are, and then reference it the next time we connect or come back, it's this way of saying retroactively, I cared about you and I still care about you. And so I'm checking in with you on this thing. Number nine, empathy which I would not define as putting your feet in somebody else's shoes. I would define empathy as putting one of your feet into the other person's shoes and keeping one of your feet in your own shoes, grounded in your own reality. Because the moment that you put both of your feet into somebody else's shoes, you get lost in their context. So going back to the example, if somebody's taking care of their sick parents and you're young and just trying to raise kids right now and you're like, well, I can't even think about my parents aging, right? You actually lose the ability to be helpful and to be curious and to notice and wonder and inquire and practice all the habits in here. Bonus tip, if you really wanna connect across generations, you should share a link to this video with them so that they can watch it too and you can sit down and have a discussion. I'm Chad, have an awesome day.